Stat Quest is cool. Stat Quest rules. Stat Quest. Stat Quest. Hello, and welcome to Stat Quest. Stat Quest is brought to you by the friendly folks in the genetics department at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Today we're going to talk about fitting a curve to data, aka Lois smoothing, aka Lois smoothing. I'm not really certain how to pronounce those two words or if the pronunciation is different. So if you know, please leave a comment below. Last time, we talked about fitting a line to data. We used least squares to find the line with the minimal squared distance from the data points. Psst. If this is news to you, check out the stat quest fitting a line to data. Today, we're going to talk about fitting a curve to data. Let's go over the main ideas first. The first main idea is to use a type of sliding window to divide the data into smaller blobs. The second main idea is, at each data point, use a type of least squares to fit a line. Now let's dive into the nitty-gritty details. The good news is that if you understand least squares, this is going to be a snap. Let's start with a simple example. We'll fit a curve to this data using a window size 5. We'll start by making a window size 5 for the first point. We'll call this point the focal point of the window. Here are the five points in the first window. This point is closest to the focal point. It's one unit away on the x-axis. This is the second closest point. It's two units away on the x-axis. This point is the third closest. And this is the fourth closest. We'll do a weighted least squares fit on all five points. The closer the point is to the focal point, the more weight or influence it has on determining the fit of the line. The focal point has the most weight of all. The closest point has the second most weight. The furthest point has the least weight. Normal, unweighted least squares without the weights would fit the data like this. With weights, however, the last point has less influence and doesn't pull the slope up as much. Now that we have fit a line to the data, we'll use it to define the first point in the fitted curve. Hooray! We've got the first point for our fitted curve. Actually, don't get too excited. It's just a first draft of where the first point should go. More on that later. For now, let's work on the second point. Now the second point is the focal point. Here's the window that contains the four closest points. But wait, isn't this window the same as before? Yep. These two points are the closest to the focal point. They are both one unit away on the x-axis. This is the next closest point. It's two units away. And this is the furthest point, three units away. So we take the four points that are closest to the focal point, even if that means the window stays in the exact same place as before. Now we do weighted least squares where the focal point gets the most weight, these two points get the next most weight, and this point gets the least weight. Here's our fitted line. And we use the line to define the second point on the new curve. So far, we have two points on our new curve. Actually, they're both just rough drafts, but let's press on to the third point. Now the third point is the focal point. Again, the window is the same, because the same points are closest, but the distances are different, and so are the weights for the least squares fit. And here's our new point. Now the fourth point is the focal point. Here's the window. Finally, it's shifted over one. These two points are both one unit away. These two points are both two units away. 
As you can see, the distance along the y-axis isn't factored into how we pick points for the window. At this stage, we're only interested in distances along the x-axis. Here's the weighted least squares fit. And here's the new point for the curve. These are the new points so far. Now this is the focal point, and here's our least squares fit and the new point. Now this is the focal point, and here's our least squares fit and the new point. Now this is the focal point. Okay, you're getting the idea. Moving along. Here are all the new points that we created using weighted least squares and a sliding window. Remember when I said these points were preliminary? These points were all pulled up by this guy. This guy is an outlier. To reduce its influence on the new curve, we create an additional weight for the weighted least squares based on how far the original point is from the new point. Old and new points that are close together along the y-axis get high weights. This point would get a lower weight because the old and new points are far from each other along the y-axis. This point would get a really low weight. With the new weights, you do the whole thing over again. However, this time we have two sets of weights. We have the original weights based on distance along the x-axis and the weights based on distance from the new points. These are the new, new points after adjusting for the distance from the original points. The curve is smoother. After adjusting all the new points based on their distance from the original, we get a nice, smooth progression. The process of using the distance between the old and new points to adjust the weights can be repeated several times until you get a nice, smooth curve. Hooray! Here's the final curve fit to the data. Now that we've got the curve, let's talk about some additional considerations. We could fit lines to the data in each window, or we could fit parabolas. The choice is yours. Here, let's look at a more complicated data set to see the effect of using lines versus parabolas. Here's the curve using weighted least squares to fit a line at each step. Here's the curve fitting parabolas at each step. As you can see, the parabola fits the data just a little bit better. Before you do your fit, make sure you look at the original data to decide which you think would be better. The lowest function in R will only fit a line, and the low S function in R can fit a line or a parabola. However, note that the default for low S is to fit a parabola. So even though these two functions implement the same algorithm, they have different default settings. The low s function in R also allows you to draw confidence intervals around the curve. It's also worth talking about the window size. You can change the size of the window to contain more or fewer points. The choice is yours. Here's the fit where the window contains a fifth of the overall points. Note, instead of specifying the exact number of points, you usually specify the proportion of the total. Here's the line using one-third of the total points per window. This red line was fit using the default setting for low S, which uses 75% of the points in each window. Oh, Let's also talk about the weight functions. The formulas for determining the weights were chosen because they seem to work well, but there is no physical or biological justification for them. Here's a graph of the weights for distance along the x-axis. Here's the graph for weights for distance between the old and new points along the y-axis. Overlapping the standard weight functions shows their subtle differences. There's no real reason we can't use an alternative weight function like this. So keep that in mind. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. 
Tune in next time for a fun adventure into the land of statistics.